Hello and welcome to the Nerddom Podcast, your one-stop shop for all things pop culture, cinema, and geek. Today we discuss one alarming fact of the quarantine, which isn't the global pandemic going around, not the political tensions plaguing our social lives, it's the severe lack of summer blockbusters. I'm talking about the truckload of movies that were supposed to come in, but now are scheduled for like late December or not at all. Movie theaters have been closing around everything since uh, COVID-19 came through, and even as I say that, this podcast is probably going to get demonetized or something. Just <laughs> I'm joined today by my co-host, Austin Chase, and as always, I am Cody Wyland. How's it going, Austin? Good. So, how do you want to start? Uh, I don't know. How do you want to start? You know, I got this. I'm mad that literally every movie that was coming out, at least this year during the summer, is supposed to be freaking amazing, especially the Top Gun movie, the new Top Gun movie. So, when was that scheduled to come out? It was scheduled to come out July, like, I want to say 23rd or somewhere around there, maybe even early August. And then it got pushed back and still hasn't had a new date. Yeah, that like, that's happening with everything. Like Tenant was supposed to come out. I was that's, Tenant was supposed to be so good. I was excited for that. That movie's confusing to me because I have no idea if it's supposed to be connected to like uh, a larger franchise or if it's just supposed to be a one-off. And see, that's why I want to watch it because it reminds me of like those kind of movies where I'm trying to think of a good example, like. Uh, Oh, I'm completely blanking on the name, and I'm going to feel so dumb. The one with the red and blue pill. Uh, the Matrix? Matrix. It reminds me of, like, a Matrix movie, or, like, Inception. Well, isn't it the same director? I think so. I, I want to say it is. The nice, The only nice thing about quarantine happening for at least, like, the media and cinema things was the streaming services getting a lot more leeway with the stuff they're allowed to put out. So, so like, di- like Disney Plus coming out with a ton of TV shows and movies that sadly got postponed, but they brought back a lot of their, like, old library stuff. Well, Disney Plus is kind of confusing to me because it, it... I was looking through and just binging the Pirates of the Caribbean movies, and then I looked on there, and they're missing the last two. Yeah, and it, it's the same thing with, like, the Marvel, like, the MCU, how they're missing both Spider-Man movies because he's a Sony-owned character. Yeah. Like, but, uh, I, I checked on, like, Stars and the other cinema streaming apps that I have no idea who subscribes to. They all have those movies, and it's all, like, contract agreements, which sucks because... They're Disney properties. They should probably have them. But yeah, that was before Disney had their own streaming service coming out. Yeah, that's the like. There's a couple OG shows from Disney, like a uh, Jake Long American Dragon. Oh, that's on there. And then like, what's another one? Like Kick Butt Batowski. Parrot Kings. So there's like a couple old school ones. Well, Parrot Kings, I, I don't really feel bad about not being able to see. Yeah, well, I was just like scrolling through and I was like, oh, I wonder, like I was looking up shows that I've watched on there when I was a kid, like Disney and Disney XD. Right. I was like, oh, they have like lab rats. So then I started looking up some of the other live action ones and I was like, they're missing a lot. Well, yeah, because, um, I guess it's all coming down to, like, what their licenses cover. For when I was, like, uh, searching up Muppets, I couldn't find a single Muppet show episode, like, at all. And there was, like, five seasons. And the main problem with that is most of the guest stars, as depressing as it is, are now currently dead. And they would have to ask the estate for the permission. Yeah. Like... That and then it's just crazy how everything got pushed back. Like, just even gaming, like, a majority of the video games that were coming out got pushed back too. 
Oh, absolutely. I, well, like, Halo, like Halo Infinite. Ooh. Well, that I, one's going to be so good when it finally comes out. At, at least with the gaming scene, like everything's been confined to specific release dates. It's not exactly that people have to cluster into movie theaters to see these games. Um, the workforce just had to get staggered and so that people weren't catching the virus. Yeah. Which is nice because I'm looking forward to Cyberpunk coming out in, um, what was it, September or November? I want to say it was November. I'll look that up, but the, those games are... I'm holding out until those games come out. Yeah. I'm excited for the Cyberpunk game because it's supposed to be like one of the biggest releases in gaming in a while, especially because the graphics and like the stuff they have going on with the game is going to be so crazy. Yeah, November 19th. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, the, those that game specifically has me amped up because I love the Witcher series. Yeah, I I only played the Witcher series. Like I played Witcher 3 Wild Hunt for like a week or two. Mm -hmm. And then I think I lent the game to you and just haven't ever touched it again. <laughs> yeah, I still have that. Yeah. Like it's one I need to play. But I still need to watch the Witcher show. Yeah. Like um I keep saying like a lot. I don't like that. Um, but The Witcher show takes place before The Witcher 3. It, yeah. It's not exactly a sequel. Or not sequel. Uh, prequel. Pre prequel. But it's a... Uh, what's it called? Uh, kind of like in a uh, retcon story. Because a lot of the cast got recast even though they do look a lot like the og game characters it takes certain aspects of it um differently yeah i'm like the nice thing about the quarantine has been it's given me a lot of time to catch up on shows that i've been wanting to watch so like i got a Crunchyroll account and watched so many animes <laughs> And then I went back and rewatched the like Star Wars Clone Wars, Star Wars Rebels, Avatar, Le Avatar Legends of Korra. Can, can we talk about um, that for a second? Clone Wars course. season seven. That ooh, that was so good, man. I they're actually supposed to be putting a Bad Batch sequel to that show up yeah. on Disney Plus, and they're doing a Rebels uh, continuation. If you just a warning for like listeners, um, if you haven't seen those shows, go you might want to skip ahead a little bit. Go watch and it. Go it, watch them. It, it's it's a real treat to see um, season seven because it brings Ray Park uh, Ray Park back from Phantom Menace, so he did his own stunts. He actually played Darth Maul again in the new yeah. season and it was it was so freaking sick they did a they did a motion capture suit for the fight scenes between mm -hmm. um if you don't want to hear spoilers i'd suggest you skip maybe i mean it was it was in the trailer everybody knows that he fights yeah. ashoka and like yeah so like they did a motion capture suit between ahsoka and maul so that the fight looks a lot more like heavy-handed and fluid compared to the season six and back fights yeah so i think it was a really good way to wrap it up especially because they touched order 66 yeah like if you it did if you've been watching it since like season one you know you knew that was coming at yeah. some point in time you knew every one of those jedi were gonna get offed at some point yeah the only thing I'll say that bugged me was rewatching Rebels. They say that um, Rex took out his inhibitor chip himself, and then also um, Bly and Wolves. But in the Clone Wars, Ahsoka takes the chip out, and you don't see him with Bly or Wolf. Well, right, but what? Where was Wolf at during Order sixty six? Because he served Plo Koon, who got freaking yeah. annihilated in 
Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. So I was hoping that with season seven, they'd meet up with Bly and Wolf and de- like finish that out. So that was one of the only things. I, I got like, s- season seven was so good. I got so pumped when I saw that uh, new clone helmet design. Oh, it's so good. Have you you've seen Rebels, right? Yes. Have you seen the final fight scene between Maul and um, Obi Wan? Yeah. It and... was like that, and then um... unpopular opinion. They did Maul's death right in that. Oh, spoilers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, but they did Maul's death right. If for everybody I that agree. was anticipating like this long drawn out fight scene between Maul and Obi Wan, that's not what we got. But what we got was two old guys fighting each other. Yeah. Well, and the nice thing about it was, if you have seen the original movies, Maul goes for the move to kill Qui Gon, and he like punches him basically and then stabs him. Mm-hmm. Maul goes for the exact same move on Obi-Wan Kenobi in their final fight, and Obi-Wan switches from Form 3 to Form 5. And then kills him. So it was just like, that entire show was so good. Uh, it makes me sad that it, it's over too soon. I want to binge more of it. Yeah, same. Like, I literally, I finished Clone Wars and Rebels... And then it went from that to Avatar Last Airbender, then Avatar Legend of Korra. And the difference in, like, styles of shows are so weird. Mm -hmm. Especially from, like, Avatar to Legends of Korra. Like, I love Legends of Korra, but it was just weird. It's (laughs) different. Like, you, you watch that show and you're anticipating what you saw in Avatar The Last Airbender, but then you see... The world of Korra is structured very differently. There's um, a new system of government in place. Everything's there's new political issues that yeah. arose, and like the spirit world works a little different, and we get a like more in depth show of that. Mm-hmm. I still think the first season is the best season they did from that show, just because the pro bending was so cool to like watch. Yeah. The, but, the the only thing is with that show I feel like they could have tied in Aang a little bit more. Yeah. I, well, I was watching a there was like a interview thing that the creator of Legends of Korra did and he basically was cuz they asked why they didn't show um the original group more. And he just said he didn't want to confuse newer viewers if they have two avatars and then Aang and Tenzin, the core's new airbender master, like Aang's kid, right. look really similar. So they just didn't want to confuse the viewers too much. Because we like an avatar last yeah. airbender, you see Roku so much and right. then you see Aang like not at all. Right. Well, the thing is, we could have seen him in spirit form. Like, how cool would that be? Like, just glowing-eyed a- old man Aang showing up. I know, it would have been so cool. Like a force ghost, like, Bora, use the airbender. Yeah. Well, because at the end of the show, um, or I guess towards the middle, her connection with the Avatar line gets um, taken away. Because right. she can't look at her past lives. And then it doesn't really get reinstated until, like, I want to say one of the last episodes. And even then, she can't really visit the Avatar. Like, they don't touch upon it again. Right. Can, so, can I say an unpopular opinion right now? Yeah. The animation, um, and I'm thinking about this right now because uh, Legend of Korra... But the animation of Star Wars Rebels, I didn't like that at all. Yeah, I liked the Clone Wars animation style better than Rebels, but I will say Rebels 
after watching the first season, because it's a four season long show. Mm-hmm. After watching the first season, I got used to it and then started liking it around like season two. So like I liked it while watching it, but well, like Clone Wars, there was an evolution to the animation style. Like if you look at episode one versus episode, yeah. Well, uh, where you could take like Yoda as an example, because Yoda's in the first episode. That abomin where... that abomination in Rebels. Yeah. Well, even like Yoda first episode, season one, episode one of Clone Wars versus him in the last episode of season six. It's completely different. Yeah, but Yoda had kept that kind of like main characteristics intact, you know? Yeah. He looked I mean, Rebels completely destroyed it. <laughs> in Rebels he looked like an old man with like two he pieces like of a gremlin. Paper. Yes. <laughs> he absolutely Well looks- and apparently it's because um in the original trilogy of the the originally Yoda looked like a doll because he was like a how do I because Jim Henson was behind it man yeah the not a mannequin what's ventriloquist dummy it was like a ventriloquist dummy no no so they tried going for that style of like Star Wars legitimately had Muppets in their movies for the first three yeah it's always weird seeing the like three uh three people Wow, C-3PO suit. <laughs> right? You got that. <laughs> I couldn't say that at all. Yeah, but... C-3PO suit's kind of weird. Um, it, it's been changed with minor variations throughout the years. Yeah. And you're gonna have to, like, really pay attention to spot them. Except for, like, Lost Jedi, where he has a red arm out of nowhere. Yeah, Last... I don't the new trilogy uh <laughs> it don't, was so bad but so good all at the same time. For those of you listening, don't add us right now. Star Wars it did what it was supposed to do. It created yeah. a continuation of the story that we already gotten used to. The issue with it was You had three different directors. Yeah. For, so the first one was... Well, just two, I mean, right? She, it was J.J. Oh, yeah, two. J.J. Abrams did the first and the last one, and then... Ryan Johnson came, from, yeah, came in for the, the middle. Second one. Which was Last Jedi. So, and they had two different storylines. So, like, they set up Snoke to be this crazy, powerful guy, and then in the second one, he gets killed, like... Basically, like, he's nothing important. So, what if, I feel like if you ignore the fact that it's a trilogy, each movie was great, and if you don't pay attention to the storylines at all, all three movies are great. If well, you look at the storyline, I feel like the third one's the only good one. See, that's the issue, because we had so many directors, so many hands in the pie, telling so many different stories that it became nonsensical to see these characters interact with each other because we see like Kylo Ren in Last Jedi he was he went down the direction of being irredeemable but then last uh Rise of Skywalker came in and uh revamped that and turned him into something else like that was the whole yeah. plan all along and then you have like the Finn and Maya my, uh, who, who's that? Uh, the Asian, uh, fighter pilot. Oh, yeah, the one that... Not that com- she wasn't the fighter pilot, she was the mechanic. The one that completely the got pilot. cut out of Rise of Skywalker? Yeah, completely, and I was like, you had a relationship form, and then you don't touch upon it. It It's idiotic at the highest level. Because, yeah. again, that's one of the other things. That was another storyline that was developed for Ryan Johnson, and then when it came down to going back to J.J. Abrams, he went down the same storyline he was going to go down, or at least a, a cleanup of the last one. Yeah. If and you're, you're going to do I a think... series, you got to stay with the same people, otherwise it's not going to be coherent. 
Yeah. On a, on another note, a uh, couple weeks ago, we were in the car with one of our friends, and we were talking about what would be crowned the best movie, like grossing movie of the year, big stuff, box office sales. Oh yeah. And what I can't remember which one it was, but I, I to say it was Birds of Prey. No, no, no. Okay, I I remember that now. I said Birds of Prey originally because I didn't remember that Bad Boys for Life came out this year, too. Oh, good. <laughs> so, I have the list up in front of me. So, number one was Bad Boys for Life, which grossed $204 million. Then you had 1917 at $156 million, almost uh, 157 And then third place, can you guess what it is? I want to say it was the Sonic movie, right? Dead on. It was Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. That grossed $146 million. And can you guess what came in after that? Um, I'm trying to think of all the movies that came out right as quarantine hit. I, 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 was, I will give you a hint, though, because this is something I didn't know. Box Office also counts December. Oh, okay. Then yeah, it'd probably be Birds of Prey, and if not, no, yeah, Birds of Prey, right? Sorry, the movie grossing behind Sonic the Hedgehog is none other than Star Wars: Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, Sonic was a good movie. I liked it. Yeah, like it's a bad sign for Disney if. Sonic the Hedgehog is outgrossing your number one property. No, I take yeah. that back. Marvel's probably their number one property. Yeah. But Sonic did every... Like, Sonic did terrible on their first CGI renderation, <laughs> showed the fans, the fans complained about it, and then the studio went back and redid it. Oh, yeah. I they made it ten times better. I would hate to be the exec who had to go go into the board meeting saying, um, so we aired the first trailer. Uh, good news is, test audience gave us immediate feedback. Bad news. Bad news. <laughs> so did the rest of the YouTube community. <laughs> Dude, it was so funny when that all that happened because i remember being all like oh okay sonic movie this is terrible and then they went back and like changed it and released the new trailers and then I, I think what me you and kyle went and saw it like it's opening weekend right uh opening week i don't think we made it for the weekend yeah that's right but i just that's still what we have a the end credit scene I went back and looked at the end credit scene, and um, would you mind doing the uh, the voice that you think it was? So we're, I'll just give a little backstory. So Cody went out to go to the bathroom or something. Because and... I thought the movie was absolutely over. The end credits rolled. We saw the um, pre credits scene that ties yeah. in for a sequel. So and I'm, so me yeah. and my friend Kyle were like, listen, we're going to sit and watch the entire movie. So we're sitting there for the credits, and we start making jokes, and then all of a sudden another end credit scene comes on, and it uh, shows Tails flying in with like this scanner thing. And <laughs> we go, um, we listen to it, and it's like, I think I found him. So then... We get into the car and start making the joke, and Cody was so confused. So we had to look up the end credit scene in the front of the car. <laughs> it and when you originally did it, it was one like an old lady smoker voice. So it was like, I think I found him. Yeah. And I looked back at the video and I was like, it sounds nothing like that, Austin. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, that's kind of like the remember the. Sorry to get off topic. There's a old YouTube channel we all used to watch a lot called Pro ZD. <laughs> there's a video where he's doing a reaction to the Final Fantasy trailer, and uh, Aqua. If you 
know anything about the series, Aqua gets uh, Norded. Norded. Yeah. So then he's like, Aqua got Norded. See, and I, then, I still have no idea what that means at all. Neither do I. I've never played Final <laughs> Fantasy. Or not Final Fantasy. I've played Final Fantasy. I've never played uh, Kingdom Hearts. But the funny thing about it was we play Super Smash Bros. And one of the characters in the game is uh, Bowser Jr. And you could play as one of his brothers. And there's Morton. So our like little inside joke was Aqua got Morton. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. It wasn't really. Yeah. It wasn't really that funny. So if you're not laughing, don't feel bad. Yeah, no, at the time it was hilarious. But are we sure about that? Eh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think quarantine has been a little interesting, just for the fact that you can kind of tell what people think about it because like i've been going to the beach a couple times throughout these past couple weeks a couple and, times like, i i yeah, i asked if you want to like go on a group call and you're like sorry man i'm at the beach and that ha- yeah, that's happened I'm, multiple I'm times go like <laughs> once or twice a week now but going to the beach it's funny to see how like at the beginning of quarantine everyone was wearing masks and now no one's wearing masks. We're all just kind of spread out from each other. And then I went on a trip to another state to go visit family. And I went to Colorado. But no one was wearing masks in Colorado. Literally, like, nobody. That, so it's just interesting to see how all the different states are handling it. Now, I should point out, you should absolutely wear masks during oh, quarantine. 100%. I wear masks. I still, when I go to the beach, even if no one around me is wearing a mask, I'll wear a mask just because it's dumb not to. Yeah. See, masks. I'm fine with the masks because I'm I'm getting used to it. I've grown acclimated to it. It's just become yeah. like daily. It's right next to my car keys. I pick up my mask right before I head out. Yeah, it's not even a question in my mind. Like, I finally, for long, I wear glasses, and for a majority of people that wear glasses, you know that your glasses will fog up when you wear the masks. So I finally found a mask that works well, that doesn't fog up my glasses, and it's been so nice. Mm. See, I, I, but, I have a pair like that, well, I have a set like that. It's a bunch of cheap ones that have, like, the metal strip uh, on the nose. So I just yeah. form that and then put the glasses over it. No fog. Yeah. I think my favorite mask that I've seen was one where it was the like Skyrim inventory description <laughs> of an armor. And it was like weight fought, uh, 0.5, defense against disease, 50, value, $100. And it was like gave a brief description. It was like... <laughs> People who wear these are cool. People who don't are going to catch COVID. <laughs> and I was like, see, that's the type of mask I would want to wear. See, the issue arises where you're just walking around and then you start hearing the battle music come on. <laughs> <laughs> For real, though. All of a sudden, you see the Thomas the Tank engine from that one mod where it replaces the dragons with Thomas. <laughs> the, the modding community for, like, Fallout and Skyrim are insane. Yeah, they're honestly. I feel like they're probably next to Minecraft. They're probably the most well done mods. So obviously, Minecraft has the whole like crazy craft, RL craft. So they have like basically full blown games as mods. No, none of them are ported over to my uh, Xbox as us console yeah. players have to deal with. Yeah. I've recently been playing uh, Fallout 76 again. Oh, have you? Yeah, it's actually it's a pretty good game now. It has its moments where it's a little glitchy, but for the most part, it, I feel like it's a normal Fallout game. Like, yeah. Once they added in the NPCs, I feel like it fixed a lot of the issues they had. There's still problems that I have with it. Because when I tried to get back into it originally, because I've been playing since 
it first came out, which was yeah. Well, we both we both got the game. I think we split the cost for it and then got it like pre-ordered it. Yeah, but that game has been broken for a long time, and Bethesda had no other choice but to keep it going because if I left it to die, that's me. It's a triple A game, so that's millions of dollars out the window. Yeah, and it's just been filled with controversy ever since. Like they put out the main bundles that they had, you know, whether it be the nylon bag for your power armor helmet. Yeah, or uh, just recently, the private server that they have. The private server is so laggy. So I just play in the open ones with one of my friends. But I will say, the way it plays now is how it should have played on release. And like if it was like if it was like it is now when it first came out, I could say I'd definitely play it. And this really when it first came out. This raises a problem that most AAA games are starting to face, which is being released before it's actually done. And yeah, well, they even like a Black Ops Four Zombies wasn't ready at all when it first came out. Yeah, and they still released it. So there, there's some game companies where if they have a deadline, they won't push it back. Like Halo Infinite, luckily has been postponed twice now, which. I'd rather a game get postponed a little bit and come out as a polished game, or even like a movie or a TV series get pushed back, rather than getting crap. <laughs> and I'd just like to take a pause for a brief word from our sponsors. Welcome back from uh, the word from our sponsors. Previously we were talking about AAA games being released before they are ready. Um, can we get back on track with that conversation? Yeah. So, the originally the whole topic of the podcast was, was going to be talking about cinemas and box office. We have diverged heavily from that original yeah. goal. So we could go back to box offices and cinema really quick. Um, I saw a post on Instagram from one of the... I actually follow a cinema page. Uh, my local movie theater posts like when new movies are coming out or when they have like updates on stuff. And they recently came out with a post saying that they might be shutting down. Yeah, that's, that's a big problem right now. Yeah. There, with this all happening right now, there's going to be some cutbacks to movie theaters, and I hate it because I love movie theaters. The uh, there's one specifically over in uh, Temecula. The, yeah, the reclining seats. It's super it's, nice, but so it went it went from being the cheap theater to getting upgraded to the most expensive theater around. Uh, Cody and I live within like walking distance of each other if we really wanted to. Right. Yeah. We're like a two, three minute drive, but the movie theaters by us, we have a cheap theater. I don't want to say its name just because I don't want to call it a cheap theater on a podcast. (laughs) We have like a cheap theater and they have like Tuesday night deals for free popcorn and like $5 movie tickets. And that like go to the movies has always been fun because you can go with a big group of friends and not have to worry about like cleaning up a house afterwards or making sure you guys have snacks in the house. You could just, like, go bring $15 and have fun. Right. And, well, unless you guys fit me with the bill where I have to pay for popcorn and drinks. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, never happened. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. That was for <laughs> Sonic. <laughs> Wasn't even a year ago. That was like February. Yeah, that was a couple months ago. That, how long? No, no, that's way longer. Like, uh, that's at least three months ago. 
<laughs> nice one. Like, I think it's crazy. We went and saw the Star Wars movie in December when it came out. Mm-hmm. I saw it four times in theaters. And then we saw the Sonic movie when it came out. And mm-hmm. I saw that twice. And then quarantine happened. So the last movie I saw in theaters was Sonic. <laughs> I, I hate having that as an ending note. <laughs> yeah. So the only thing that that is positive about movie theaters kind of getting shut down is everything is going more digital now. So movie releases, like there's been a couple like um, Onward. Yeah, that got released straight to Disney+. Plus. Yeah, and then um, another one that's coming out, um, a Netflix original movie. Yeah, but those remember the, huh? Those original movies all automatically get sent to Netflix. Yeah, well, I'm just saying a lot more traction is being put on digital, like attention, mm-hmm. and I like it just because we'll have more stuff to watch digitally instead of having to drive to the theater. But for like big movie releases, like let's say the next Marvel movie comes out, I would hate to not see that in a theater. I like the James Cameron Avatar movies. See, those are those movies kind of confuse me because what was the big deal with the Avatar movies? I get the CG in there is impeccable; it's amazing, but, especially because it came out in two thousand nine. Did it? Was it that long ago? It was. Yeah. So James Cameron Avatar, one of my all time. Literally in my top three favorite movies of all time, next to Ready Player One, and then Avatar live action mm-hmm. Avatar movie, right? So this has been <laughs> an episode of the <laughs> Nudum Podcast. <laughs> Just close out the podcast now. That, see, we don't, I hate we don't to get talk about M Night Shyamalan's. I hate to get off track, but oh. what was? What was anybody thinking when they created that movie? I think they were thinking, ooh, money. <laughs> that, was, that was a little after The Last Airbender. Was was Last yeah. Airbender completely out in 2009? I want to say the entire show was out by the time the movie got released. Okay. Because- it's kind of it's funny because I always joke that like, for Disney, like, Cars 1 and Cars 3 happened, they completely skipped over Cars 2. And then, like, Avatar said they were releasing a movie, and then they didn't. Yeah. Yeah, that's... We don't, we don't acknowledge the Avatar Last Airbender movie or Cars 2. We just don't acknowledge them as canon in their universes. Well, what was Cars 2? That was the one where Tomator was... <laughs> Tomator was a spy. <laughs> Listen, for, I, I love Larry the Cable Guy, and watching Toe Mater for an entire movie, I learned that it might get a little bit annoying after a little while. Mm-hmm. It wasn't a bad movie, it's just wasn't a good movie. <laughs> it's, it's no Incredibles 2. <laughs> yep, Incredibles 2 was, uh, we waited how long for that, like 20 years? I don't even know when Incredibles 1 came out 2004 so, so 16 years yeah uh, well what was Finding Nemo because I, I don't know if that was longer I mean Finding Finding Nemo 2003 second, yeah Finding Nemo was a good one like the second movie in the what was it Finding Dory yeah yeah that was actually I think that was an okay movie the funny, the funny thing is, we rant about movies and if they're good or bad. But realistically, we do high school, like we did a high school video production. I, I think our high school's video production program was miles ahead of any other high school, right? And most colleges, like our program was really, really good. We had a Canon sponsorship and a Sony sponsorship, and would go on workshops shout once a month with trained professionals. <laughs> that Canon shout out. Yeah, <laughs> we, we love them. Hey, Ken, Ken, if you want to support the show, um, you can email us at uh, nerddumbpodcast at gmail.com. I'll set yeah. that up right after this. 
Heck, even Sony, Rob, we know you're listening. <laughs> Enough with the name drops. I think uh, <laughs> we're getting to cease and no desist more. territory. Yeah. But um, I always think it's funny because I'll be criticizing movies in front of people. And one of my uh, friend's parents was like, you guys don't know anything about cinema. And I was like, I may not have made a movie, but I know what makes it good. <laughs> Yeah. Well, as as audience members, it's easy for us to criticize something that we haven't done ourselves. Oh, 100%. Which, it's a, it's a shame, because sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing. Yeah, because yeah. there's definitely... I'm trying to think of a good example. La- of a, like Last the, of Us 2. Whole... <laughs> so, for those of you who don't already know, Last of Us 2 got a lot of flack. Because people started actually threatening the voice actors for the performance. And it was just, what the, what are people thinking when they do that? Because, yeah, you hated this character, but honestly, they did their job. That's what they were supposed to do. Harry Potter, for example, everybody hated Dolores. Like, I hated her for, like, the entire movie. But... She did her job. She created a very bad, well done character, well well done, well done villain for a movie. And we, granted, we didn't like that, but that's the point. Not to like the villain. Yeah, and like, I think that's a going on Harry Potter um, book series that get turned into movies. I read a lot of books. I. Since quarantine started, I've probably spent around like three hundred buck, uh, like three hundred dollars on books. So I read a lot. At Amazon and shopping, couple, huh? At Amazon shopping, right there. For real though, and Barnes and Nobles before everything really shut down. Right. But um, like one one series that I really enjoy is um the, uh, City of Bones, aka like a Shadow Hunter series. Great, amazing books. Love them. They did a TV show, and it was terrible. And, like, the the Divergent books and movies, the Divergent books were freaking great. The movies were pretty good. And then they just completely left it off and didn't make the next movie in it. So, so are you saying that they were Divergent from their source material? Yes. Yes. And, like, the uh, Percy Jackson Lightning Thief, they just stopped at the second movie. Did they? I thought they went on. Uh, didn't they go to a third movie? Nope. It, they did Lightning Thief and then Sea of Monsters, and that was it. Huh. Oh, no. I'm thinking of Narnia. Yeah, Narnia finished and even added, a, I think, a fourth one, right? Or now, third, fourth? Third. Third. I'm, I'm pretty sure. I fell out of it yeah, a long the time ago. Dawn Treader or something like that. The boat one. Prince of Casp? Yeah. Prince of Caspian? I don't know. But yeah, they had that boat one. Um, Nanya was kind of a hard one for me to actually get into. Yeah. It, it like, was... I just think I always think that when you take a book series that people read and love, it's either going to do really, really well when it gets turned into a movie like the Harry Potter series did and like Lord of the Rings, or it's going to do really, really bad because it's going to go off on like weird tangents or leave out important parts. And it's like most movies are like nowadays like two hours to three hours long. So obviously you can't capture a whole book in a three-hour movie. So, right. I feel like it's a risk and reward type thing. And for book series especially, you have to be careful about what you do to serve justice to the characters. Like, sometimes you yeah. have a complete miscasting in who you put in there. Well, yeah, so going back to the Shadowhunter series, one of my favorite characters is he owns a bookstore and not to be race picky, 
but he's white in the book. And then in the show, he is a African American cop. So they uh, they not only change his occupation, but they also change who he is. So like yes. his background and, and everything. Big, yeah, and in the in the book, they talk about um, his family and like where he came from and like what he went through. And then in the TV show, they just completely disregard it and they're like, "Hey, this is Luke." That that and it's like, because it, it's not like a problem that I have with ch- like changing actors based on race. Yeah, the problem the I have like, is when you change a character so dramatically that you change who they are to serve a different story. Like, you're not doing justice to the book anymore. You're creating your own stuff. Yeah, and that's, like, that was my biggest problem with it. Because, like, if you have an actor, let's say you have, I'm trying to think of someone, like, big in movies. Let's say, like, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You mean Ewan McGregor? Yeah, let's say someone was, like, an African-American actor was better than um, Gregor, right. I wouldn't mind you putting in the African-American actor to play Obi-Wan Kenobi. Because if the actor is better, I don't mind looking past a race thing and just looking at the character as its own thing. Right. But as soon as you change like an occupation, that's... Just, and like, and the they... home life, because yeah, the... Se- series of events that leads up to a person becoming a cop instead of a bookstore owner yeah. have to, has to change dramatically. Well, so, and that was that was the biggest problem I had. I didn't mind that they had the African-American actor because he actually did a very good job with what he was given. The issue I had with it was he went from being a bookstore owner to a cop, and the reason was because his they gave him, like, a, like a wife and a kid, and they got killed, and then it just went off in this, like, very oddly specific backstory that had nothing to do with the story at all and just trying to give it, him an excuse to be a cop. Yeah. It, yeah, that's that's one of the issues with in my opinion, producers in Hollywood right now. Because yeah. you'll submit a script and producers will look over it and they'll say, oh, we love it. Except we're going to change this, this, this. Actually, we're just going to rewrite the script. So if you don't mind, could you get please kindly get the hell out of our office? Yeah, I saw a, a YouTube video this morning when I woke up. Uh, let me find the guy's channel just so that way. Are you talking about I, uh, I, just, I, I won't name drop. I'm not even going to say the name of the video. Uh. But basically the video is a dude walks in with a script for an anime like the anime's final season. Right. And he slides it across the table to the producer, and he's like, this is the final season, wrapped everything up nice, even gave the fans a little bit of, like, a hint of, um, like, this is why the show did this and did a really great job. And then the producer pushes it back across the table and was like, yeah, so you're one of the biggest animes of all time, and you're making millions of dollars right now and have, like, billions of fans. So we're gonna renew you for another season. You can hold off on this for a that little bit. Idiotic. You're gonna give a and he was like, Yeah, no, I can't do that and then the producer shoves it back across the table again and is like, just give him like a kid or something and they're like, But the main villain's dead and he was like, Do what Boruto did, give the main villain a kid. Oh you're and not slid it back across the Are you table. not talking about Boruto? <laughs> oh no, we're not. But it was like a, it didn't give a specific anime name. It was just like a joke on this is how producers handle animes. Yeah, and I was like, that's kind of that's kind of producers with like everything. Mind you, you can have some really amazing producers who understands like, the source material and understands what's going into it. Yeah, and I feel like you have to take an account of the fans and the fans' opinions. It's like, not I don't want to call it an anime, but fairy tale. I loved fairy tale, and it was like one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. But then they released it for a final like fifty episodes, and it's like. It's good, but I would have been fine if they didn't do Pe- that. People have to learn when to stop with their yeah. with their storytelling. Like people have to learn when the end is, because with a uh, perfect example, Gravity Falls. 
Oh. The following for that show was massive. I loved that show for years. And Alex Hirsch has gone on saying that he's not going to be doing a third season. He's not going to be doing anything to continue the story because it finished what it was supposed to do. It was supposed to tell a story about his summer. And that was it. That he did his job. He made the story. It had a beginning, middle, and end. And he was good with that. He there's still so many uh, like holes opened up. They found an alien spaceship, big big hole opening, alien spaceship, and then they go on to talk about the other dimensions, another big hole like plot hole that they could touch into, and then the main villain isn't actually dead. No, he is. He is technically sort of. Well, in the at the end of the show, there's kind of this hint that he's not dead, and I don't want to spoil it. Well, the stone, uh, crap. Never mind. I caught myself right before I said it. Yeah, but so they definitely finished the show in quotation marks, but they left it wide open. Like I feel like I don't know. I don't know. He he closed it specifically with the intention of. Their story was over. Like, sure, there's yeah. a bunch of different, like, uh, sidelines that they could take. But for the most part, it's over. Of course there's yeah. going to be gnomes and gravity fall. Of course there's going to be, like, some weird stuff happening around the world. But, and that's what... Okay, I was about to say another spoiler, but I'm not going to. Um, yeah. But that's just, like, sideline stuff. That took the back seat the entire story. Yes, you had, like, the supernatural villain... But at the end of the day, all the supernatural stuff that they did one-offs with, that was sideline stuff. It yeah, only like, lasted well, an episode. I wouldn't, mind, like, I wouldn't mind seeing a spin-off series where the characters are a little older, especially because now Disney Plus has access to doing spin-offs. Yeah. Like, I wouldn't mind seeing them return I don't to know. Gravity Falls characters. Not even maybe to Gravity Falls but maybe just return to the characters for maybe, like, a season or two. Like, I wouldn't mind seeing something like that. We don't necessarily need it. The show is great, and I feel like they could end off where they left off, but they definitely left it open enough that they could do another season or two if they wanted to. I feel like there's a demand for it. The fans all still love the show. That's the key issue, though. If Disney Plus goes through and makes another season... They run the risk of doing something that the fans don't like. Yeah. Because you have to understand that with this kind of fan base, everybody is going off in their own directions. Even while the show was going, people were coming up with theories about how the show is going to uh, go next time an episode airs. And people created their own stories from that. Their own ideas. So if Disney comes in after the fact and does their own thing, they're going to run into the same problem that they did with Star Wars. Because Alex yeah. is no Alex Hirsch is no longer a part of it. He's he said he's done with it. So they would have to actually bring in a new director uh, if they can't talk Alex Hirsch into doing it again. Yeah. Which that's just creating a new slew of problems. Like I think so. My favorite show of all time is Community. If you haven't seen Community, it's kind of like an office meets Friends meets Parks and Rec. Right. right. So it's like a very good combo of like all the things I love in a show. Mm-hmm. They have callbacks to jokes that they set up for three seasons. Like one of the one of my favorite things in the show, they make a Beetlejuice joke for three seasons straight. So they like say the word Beetlejuice and then after the third time you see a Beetlejuice guy walk across the screen in the background and if you're not paying attention you won't notice it so it's like a very in-depth show that's self-aware and knows what they're doing Mm -hmm. well what do you expect what do you expect from Dan Harmon the guy who created like uh, Rick and Morty yeah so it's like it's such a good show and the cast for it was amazing the entire show joked from like the beginning of the show that they were going to be six seasons in a movie. One of the characters, Abed, 
lives in his own little world and pretends that everything going around on around him is a TV show. So he jokes that they're like in a season and like self aware of that. So he kind of breaks the third wall. Mm-hmm. But the show always jokes about six seasons in a movie, and the cast has come out saying that if they offered them a spot, they would gladly take it. So now it's being joked about, especially because Netflix has come out and released a community on their streaming platform. Right. So, like, that's one of the ones where, like, if they touch it and they ruin my show, I will never forgive them. I mean, they kind of already messed with it a little bit. They took down a, a very key episode that, in my opinion, is one of the best episodes of the series. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the controversy about it was, if you are looking at it with no context at all, you will see Ken Jeong uh, appear in the episode in blackface. He so to give context behind it because I have seen this show eight times through since quarantine has started, and I I'm not joking eight times through and it's six seasons. So Ken Jong plays a character named Ben Chang. His character is a little unstable mentally, and they joke about it throughout the entire show. They play a Dungeons and Dragons game, and he plays a dark elf, like a, like a shadow elf, and dark elves usually are black or darker skin. So he paints himself and dresses up as a cosplay of his character and his black face. So then, coming into 2020, and they released the show on Netflix, and people were watching through it, everyone was super pissed at Community and Ken Jong. So they just took the episode off Netflix. It's still up on Hulu. It's not on Netflix. Oh, is it still on Hulu? Um, last time I checked, it was, but I checked like a month ago. Mm. But that is like debatably the best episode of the show, and they took it off because people got pissed about it. A guy dressing up as a dark elf. But mind you, it's all about context of the show. If you're watching it, you won't really care. But if you're just looking at it from an outside perspective without watching the show, it looks like they're dressing a guy up. Yeah, it, it it's a shame, though, because, yes, it does look bad. But just look up Drow on Google and you will find exactly that image over yeah. and over and over again. And the funny thing is they have, they have Pierce. Pierce is like an old guy and he's kind of like, Pierce is super racist. And it's Chevy like, Chase, so he's practically playing Chevy Chase. <laughs> yeah. He's like racist and sexist throughout the entire show. But that's his character. And I feel like, well, at I, least for me... I don't think a, that's a character as much as it is just Chevy Chase being recorded. Yeah, but I'm saying like that's his... In the show, that's who he is. So like, I feel... For me... Especially with, like, this whole uh, Black Lives Matter movement, which I think is very, like, needed to happen and is a good thing that is happening finally, especially with, like, our generation. Right. I just think there's context to what is okay and what isn't okay. And I feel like, especially in, like, cinema and uh, TV, people are starting to look at things and being mad about things that happened, like, 20 years ago on a show. And it's all... I always joke that it's all about when it happened, why it happened, and how it happened. So, like, in a movie that was released in, like, 1980, let's say there's, like, a racist, like a racist joke. Yes, it's not okay to make, but it also was 1980. It, it's People a product... Really didn't care. It's a product of its time. And yeah, Disney has even done stuff on their own streaming service, like disclaimers saying there were, this was a product of its time, uh, be warned, stuff like that. Yeah, and that's so, the sort of stuff we need to get accustomed to because if we just taking if we just take away all the offensive stuff, as much as it, it I hate to say it, stuff that offends us, 
if we take all that stuff off the internet, we lose a lot of content because yeah, it's ingrained in our culture, whether it be for better or worse. Yeah, and I feel like it, especially because there's some people out there who are like like me, for instance. I can enjoy something that's a little older, even if it has some like problems with the movie that if it was released today would do terribly just because it's like a little bigoted but back then it's a it's a good movie like i feel i want to say sandlot had a gay joke in it that if it was released now everyone would be pissed about it whenever someone talks about sandlot they always remember loving the movie right so it's all a matter of like context of when it came out and why they chose to do it yeah it's a shame that we can't see more of these just uh, controversial movies and tv shows get left alone but just with a disclaimer on it saying okay this is what happened i'm we're sorry that this was ever made but it was a part of society it created ideas and concepts that we use today yeah and like some some things are like nowadays i feel like people know not to put certain things in their movies and tv shows just because it's not going to help anything it's not really uplifting to the audience and the consumers of like nowadays back then people really didn't care like, I feel like people get a lot more offended more easily. But at the same time, there's some stuff where, yes, you should get offended. But then there's other things where, let's say, I, I'm trying to think of how best to describe this about being completely on PC. Actually, yeah, political correctness. It It's <laughs> way different now than it was even, like, five years ago. I'm glad it is because it's a good thing that we're so politically aware now. And, like, it's a good thing. But I just think it's interesting how much things have changed in such a short amount of time. Especially yeah. in cinema. And if we don't change it now, it's just going to get pushed on and pushed on, and it's going to boil over into tensions that arise in sometimes one of, some of the worst times in history. Yeah. Because we need to change that now if we have any hope in making sure that things become better. Yeah, and like, I feel like movies and TV shows and even like any kind of media is an escape from the real world. So when I'm watching a movie, I don't want to be reminded of the real world and the struggles that are going on in real life. I'd rather just be able to sit and enjoy the world that they're that are being presented. And I feel like movies nowadays are doing a really good job of doing that, where they're not really bringing in real life things into the movies. Yeah. So I feel like cinema has taken a very interesting turn, and I feel like it's for the better, and I'm enjoying the stuff that's being put out. But, so, but changes are going to be made very soon. If not oh, yeah. already. Yeah. And on that that's... and on that depressing note, we're gonna be calling it <laughs> an <laughs> end to this podcast episode. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, we'll be putting these out, I hope weekly. It depends on who I can get. Thank uh thank you, Austin, for coming on to the show. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. Uh and as always, I will see you guys next week. Be good people. Good night. Good evening. Um, what are what are other ways to say goodbye? Um, Bo from Spider Man Far From Home. You've you've just let me down. <laughs> 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 and on that depressing note, I'll close this out. <laughs> so long, people. Bye.